I think people listening that are kind of following along, and I appreciate this is quite detailed. It's been covered in some previous episodes, um, but hopefully we're, we're covering enough detail to help people kind of grab a hold of it. They might be thinking, okay, I understand that the lipoproteins in the periphery are distinct and separate from lipoproteins in the brain. But then you're saying high LDL cholesterol is a risk factor for dementia. If, if low-density lipoproteins or ApoB containing lipoproteins like Tom and I have discussed previously, which is probably a little more specific, uh, are not crossing the blood-brain barrier and depositing cholesterol in brain circuitry within neurons, uh, how, what's the proposed mechanism by which elevated LDL cholesterol in the periphery is having an effect on dementia. Yeah. So just because it's not crossing the blood brain barrier doesn't mean it's not accumulating in the blood vessels that feed the brain, the small blood vessels, the large intracranial vessels, the carotids. Of course, the brain needs two primary things to be healthy. We're going to talk about the activation component, but it also needs fuel. Fuel comes in the form of blood flow, oxygen, vitamins, nutrition. If you're cutting off glucose, all those things. If you're cutting off blood flow delivery to the brain because there's atherosclerotic disease, that's obviously a problem in itself. But also think about the downstream inflammatory inflammation that happens with atherosclerotic disease in the periphery. That inflammation, while LDL isn't crossing the blood-brain barrier, we do know that that inflammation can cross the blood-brain barrier. We do know that there's this relationship between high-sensitivity CRP, atherosclerotic disease, but also brain atrophy and dementia. Tom, do you have any other mechanisms there? No, I think you're exactly right. Uh, high LDL cholesterol is usually associated with a bunch of other metabolic abnormalities. And the most common cause of uh, lipid ApoB disturbances nowadays is insulin resistance. So uh, is that part of the explanation why, hey, high LDLC is associated with it? To down, get real ugly, Kelly and Ann and I discovered within the last year, uh, ApoB you know, we don't all produce the exact same type of ApoB. There are variants of ApoB. And some researchers have identified a couple of ApoB variants produced in the liver that if that's the type of ApoB you got in wrapping your particles, that seems to be a, compared to regular ApoB that is not of these variants, is significantly associated with Alzheimer's disease. Again, I don't think we know why. What does is that a type of ApoB that just is formed for us for atherosclerosis in the cranial arteries? But there's always more to any study. So there are different variants of ApoB. They're rare. This is, this is not the run of the mill ApoB that most people have, but there's more to the story as always. Okay, folks, just us again for another quick breakout. There are a few points here that I really want to stick. Number one, cholesterol levels in the brain are separate to the periphery. Although LDL cholesterol is a risk factor for dementia, it's not that cholesterol in your blood that you test on a blood test in these low-density lipoproteins crosses into the brain. That does not happen. Number two, high LDL cholesterol is thought to primarily increase risk of dementia by causing atherosclerosis in arteries that supply the brain with blood and therefore key nutrients. This atherosclerosis in arteries supplying the brain with blood is also thought to increase inflammatory proteins that can cross the blood-brain barrier and damage cells in the brain. Number three, getting your LDL cholesterol, or more specifically ApoB, to goal as early in life as possible is one of the most important things that you can do to prevent dementia. The 2024 Lancet report suggests that one can reduce their risk of dementia by 7% by addressing this single risk factor. This can be achieved with lifestyle, which I outlined in my recent video on dietary fats and or using lipid lowering medications, depending on the person. Okay, back to the episode to clarify a statement made in the 2024 Lancet report on preventing dementia that contradicts this idea that low density lipoproteins or LDLs do not cross the blood brain barrier. 
There's a paragraph in this report that confuses me and I suspect it will confuse others given what we've spoken about here about the blood-brain barrier and cholesterol not crossing it. And it says excess brain cholesterol is associated with increased stroke risk and deposition of brain amyloid beta and tau, suggesting a potential mechanism for the link between LDL cholesterol and dementia. Is that confusing to you too? Yeah, and that, there's no peer review on that article. Because if I'm doing peer review, how the hell did you measure brain cholesterol would be my first question. And if they can't report that, then how do you know there's too much cholesterol in the brain? You know, so uh, I think they confuse brain cholesterol with LDL cholesterol has to be my guess. Yeah, I, I, this is the same school of thought I came from before I met Tom, thinking that, you know, LDL cholesterol goes into the brain, but it, it clearly doesn't. So I think it's a, a poorly worded sentence. The kind of take home point here when we're considering LDL cholesterol is that even though it's in the periphery and low density lipoproteins are not crossing the blood brain barrier, it is advantageous from a dementia prevention point of view to get LDL cholesterol down to a certain goal, and maybe we can discuss what that looks like, uh, to prevent certain pathology in the periphery that can affect brain function, brain health. Yeah. And I, this was one of the most modifiable risk factors in their report. They attributed 7% of dementia cases to elevated LDLC cholesterol. And I, I think that that could be variable dependent on the person. So maybe in an APOE4 carrier where having high LDLC, having high APOB is a primary driver for their disease process, that could be a huge, huge portion of their dementia prevention risk uh, strategy. And my two favorite preventive neurologists are very aggressive in making sure ApoB is controlled in their patients because it's one part of this uh, scenario there. Are the targets for LDL cholesterol or ApoB for pre preventing dementia the same as those targets that we've previously discussed, Tom, depending if someone's kind of low risk versus high risk? Well, I think if we believe what we've discussed today, your main reason to lower LDL cholesterol or ApoB is to prevent atherosclerotic disease in every arterial bed in the body, including extracranial carotid and uh, cerebral arteries, as well as coronary arteries, but peripheral arteries, your aorta. So, uh, in study after study, it's just not even arguable anymore that uh you really want to be almost hypo-beta lipoproteinemia because those people don't get any atherosclerosis. And it's pretty much an ApoB below 50. Right now, the guidelines do call for an ApoB below 50, but only in the total nightmares of the world. People have survived uh, strokes or heart attacks. We take the more preventative approach. Hey, if that's good for them, why isn't that also good for you much earlier in life? As long as there's no downside to whatever therapy I'm using to achieve making you hypobeta lipoproteinemia. And there's pretty much not. And that can be accomplished with obviously some combination of lifestyle uh, that might be appropriate to a given individual. And usually if you want hypobeta, you're going to have to use an ApoB lowering drug uh, to get those type of levels. So uh, that's our approach to it now. We're very aggressive. I've just seen too much atherosclerosis in my life. Kelly Ann has seen way too much neurologic disease. And if we can say there's no downside to doing this, why are we not doing it? And again, Simon, it, I can't reiterate it enough. We've discussed it elsewhere. Because of aggressive lipid modulating therapy, I can make an ApoB30 or an LDL cholesterol 10. There is zero evidence that that has any effect on cerebral or any other type of neurologic functioning for the reason we just told. Plasma cholesterol is a separate pool of cholesterol apart from brain cholesterol. And the sooner more people would recognize that and get onto it, they would stop all this idiocy that you're destroying your brain by lowering plasma cholesterol concentrations. <laughs> the other one that I, I often laugh at is, you know, eating the 10 eggs a day because your brain's 
your brain contains 20 to 25 percent of whole yes, body we, cholesterol so <laughs> let's, eat, let's eat a lot of cholesterol so that it gets up to the brain which uh, i think we've kind of thoroughly and, and just an aside so, and we've discussed this simon i don't think because your brain is not requiring on plasma cholesterol, driving your plasma LDL cholesterol at 240 is not protective for your brain. <laughs> so, uh, so just a little bit of warning to our lean mass hyper responder friends. I recently ran my full labs through Function Health. And I have to say the results were eye-opening. Turns out my ApoB was higher than ideal, probably thanks to a little too much coconut yogurt. I also found out I was slightly low in copper, something that I would have never suspected without testing. On the flip side, my biological age came back 13.3 years younger than my actual age, a calculation based on the work of aging researcher, Dr. Morgan Levine. So all in all, I've got a few tweaks to make to optimize my lipids and nutrient status, but overall my blood work says I'm doing pretty well. That's what I love about function. You get access to over 160 biomarkers covering everything from hormones and inflammation to nutrients, toxins, cardiovascular risk, and more. And all your results are housed in one beautiful platform, all tracked over time. Once you get your results, you can make informed changes before small issues become big ones. To get started, head to functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill. The first 1000 people get a $100 credit toward their membership. That's functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill.